Hello and welcome to this video. I would like to show this unusual lock to you. It was sent to me by Talan Pick quite a while ago and as you can see it has um, a lot of uh, information on the on the front. It says E star S and uh, MP10 and uh, when we look at the key we can uh, yeah we will better understand what that means so E star S is probably the operation for Euro spec and the star is just an, well maybe an indication for that it's uh, uh, yeah, a special lock it is something special and the MP uh, stands for multi pin so that's nice that we don't have not only to deal with one pin that it has more than one pin so it's a multi pin lock and it has uh, 10 of these these pins and of course it's a multi pin security lock so 10 pins, uh, when we look at the bidding of the key, we can see that it has uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 pins or 6 cuts for the 6 chambers plus 1, 2, 3, 4 passive pins for, uh, for key control. So if we sum up, it, they are, these are a total of uh, 10 pins, so that's true. Um, what's even more interesting is that the chambers in the Bible are um, are um, filled with with, uh, with screws, and as these screws are uh, rusted, I think that they are not made by lock pickers um, who turned this into a uh, training lock, but maybe are uh, factory made. So that's that's pretty that's pretty cool. Ah, it's also anti-drill uh, protection or drill protection. The keyway is relatively wide open, as you can see, so it's easy to access the pins. Yeah, so let me uh, clamp it in a vise, and I will pick it for you. Then we will look inside, um, and afterwards, before the end of this video, I will show you something interesting uh, on this lock. Um, Talan pick. Um, told me that um, he read something um, about it um, <laughs> for which we will uh, need this needle so I will show you that um, at the end of this video so take this uh, to the side and now let me clamp it in a vise and pick it for you so the E star S MP10 is clamped in a vise that's the bidding on the key again works nice and smooth and it's locked up I apply tension from the pin side and use heavy tension and pick with these uh, with this uh, Peterson number no. five deep hook. I picked it before, so I know the binding order and it's uh, very predictable. So one is the first binder. Got it. Now two. I think I got it. Three is springy. Go to four. Got it. Five is stiff and six is moving. And got a four set. Now I'm searching for feedback from a spool. And that's the hardest part to find these spools and to pick them. Yeah, getting feedback here and yeah, got it and set it all the way it needs. And I think I got my four set back. I'm searching for the next spool. Oh, six wasn't. Six came back, and I touched it, and now I'm back in my nice four set. But still, one spool is missing. Get feedback from here. Come on, and it's open. And as the binding order is so definite, um, so predictable, I want to pick it the other way around and uh, see if it picks the other way around. So I'm turning it now clockwise and one is springy this time and I go all the way to, to six and six is binding. Go to five, five is hmm. Five gave me a click, or was it four? I'm moving forward. 
I'm on one, one is still springy, two is springy, three is springy, four, five, six, maybe I overset something, so I reset, start again, yeah, six is binding, I'm doing something wrong here, let's see. Okay, six is binding. Got it. Five is stiff, nine one four. Gotta click. Three is uh, springy, nine one two. Got it. Now one is binding, great. And got a full set. I'll check for the spools. Okay, got a spool here. And it's open. So the other spool was already picked by my previous uh, uh, picking attempt. <clears throat> so now let's cut it. Okay, here we see the two um, pins or barbarians for the um, for the key control cutouts, and also on the other side, I believe. No, there are no such two. Oops, pins or barbarians. I will see if I can get them out. Yeah, two pins. So, there are no such pins on this side, that's strange. Anyhow, let's dump out the key pins. Or standard, 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 very long standard, standard and standard. All standard key pins. From the plug, we see uh, the six chambers for the um, active pins, the two uh, anti drill pins, and the holes for the pins for the key control. And some other uh, little holes here, I'm not sure what they are good for. Alright, anyhow, let's check the driver pins. Oops, one is a standard, two is a spool, that's surprising, three is a spool, oh. all spools, wow. And the last is also a standard. All right, dump out the springs. Okay, let's have a quick look uh, to the pinning. All key pins are uh, standard and we have one standard driver in one and six. The rest are very nicely made spools and we have also very nice, uh, yeah, probably steel pins, uh, steel springs, sorry. Check, my, check it with my magnet. Mm, they are not steel. Oops, yes, they are. Okay, and how about the uh, pins? Ah. The spools are made from steel, and the 
the key pins. They are not. So it looks like that the uh, spools are made from steel. And how about this? It's also made from steel. So the drivers seem to be made from steel and the key pins are from a different uh, metal. Yeah, it's also steel. Um, no, but the key pins are not. Okay. Now let me quickly look into the. Uh, oh. To the housing, we have um, we have cutouts here for for side bars or maybe for other um, features. Ah, these are the the cutouts for the uh, pins that stick out when the wrong keys inserted. So the passive pins for uh, for key control. But I still don't know what uh, these holes are good for. Maybe. Uh, construction holes. All right. Ah, uh, I want to check if uh, these screws can be unscrewed. Let's check with number no it doesn't want to go. Let's check the last. Yeah, the last one is is moving, so it's turning. I can remove the screw. We can look inside. Of course, there is a there is threading. And that's the little screw. Yeah, I think these are made made are factory made, but maybe tell and pick you can uh, tell us um, if you made them, if someone else made them also, or or if you also think that these are factory made. Alright, uh, so much for the E star S and P10. Um, no, as the binding order is so, um, yeah, is so definite. I want to see if I can see um, a deviation in the holes. I think it's it's really hard to to see if there is if there is something which is not straight. Maybe no, I'm not sure. Um, but it will also quickly reassemble. I'm sorry, today video is not as smooth as I wanted it to be, and maybe a little bit longer. That's almost a shear line here, number four. So uh, let's start with one. So two is not effective. It's working as a standard pin because it's not touching the the thin spool part. Five also not, and five is. So we have actually. Uh, two effective spools at three and four. The rest um, are sorry, I had to should have zoomed in. Um, so two effective spools at three and uh, five. The rest are either standard pins or there's so less uh, space left for the spool that it um, uh, does not uh, well, the spool doesn't come into play. All right. Um, now really that's it for the E star S and now I want to show you the little trick with the Lockwood padlock. Um, the thing is that you can remove the shackle very easily. Therefore um, you have to turn the, um, the plug into the open position and now you can see this little pin here on the top. If you push it with a needle, you can remove the shackle. Pretty cool. And you can see the barbarian here. And when you uh, lock up the, or when you, yeah, when you 
close the, the lock, the barbarian comes out and uh, blocks the blocks the way. And when you uh, when you turn it, it goes in a little bit. And now, when you push the pin, it goes in a little bit deeper. Comes out again. I push the pin again, and it disappears. And that's um, that's yeah connected to this uh, cutout here. A normal situation is that the barbarian um, prevents the um, uh, shackle from coming out because um, you cannot overcome uh, this thick part because of the barbarian. And uh, but when you uh, push this little pin. Barbarian completely um, goes inside the housing and then you can remove it. And of course, when you uh, close the lock, Barbarian goes uh, out a little bit more so it uh, completely fills this, um, yeah, this cutout here. Reassembling of the shackle is it's also very easy. You have to uh, turn the key so that the lock is in the open state you have to push down this pin and then you can <laughs> you can push down the shackle I said it's easy theory uh, with three hands it would be even easier But it's possible, I did it before. Maybe something wrong is with Barbarian. No, Barbarian is in the right place. And also goes away completely. So now it should work. Yeah. Reassembled. Fixed, not coming out at all, and closed again. Whew, all right. So this was the uh, M star S MP10, and the goodie here is the Lockwood shackle removal instruction. All right. Thank you very much for watching, Talampik. Thank you very much for uh, the hint and for the lock. And everybody else, uh, sorry for this long and chaotic video. Hope you enjoyed nonetheless. Yeah, thanks for watching. Happy picking. Bye bye. Sorry, it's me again, but I just found the two missing uh, key control pins that I somehow lost while uh, disassembling the lock. So we have the plug with the uh, six chambers for the uh, six active pins, and we have uh, five uh, pins on the two sides here, which take the pins for the key control and I will just quickly assemble uh, the holes with four of these pins and you can see uh, these pins have two diameters and it goes in with a smaller diameter first. So now this key has um, two cutouts or two dents and when I insert it, insert the key to the keyway we can see this, that two of these little pins are sunken inside the plug and two of them stick out a little bit. And now I want to show you what happens uh, when we insert the wrong key. So let's assume that the right key has a uh, dent on this side and on that side at the end of the key, uh, at the tip of the key. And therefore we would have a pin here. And Pin there. Now I reassemble the, the lock. And if the right key is inserted, there is a dent at the end of both sides and plug can turn. So no problem. And now if the wrong key is inserted, I can insert the key because there are these uh, two uh, cutouts in the uh, in the housing, but I cannot turn it. 
So that's how uh, these passive pins, these key control pins work. Key can be inserted, the wrong key, because the pins can have place uh, inside the housing because of this cutout here, left and right, but uh, you cannot turn it. Alright, so that's now really it, and thanks for watching, happy picking, and bye-bye.